Good afternoon, and welcome to the Center Stage Seminar Series event. My name is Tiffany Willoughby, Education Programs and Outreach Manager in the Office of Research at the University of Texas at Dallas. I will be your moderator. Joining me today is your presenter, Dr. Jay Virasame. Dr. Jay Virasame joined the University of Texas at Dallas in 2010 after working in industry for 16 years. He is a faculty teacher in the Computer Science Department. Dr. Virasame is the director of the Center for Computer Science Education and Outreach at UT Dallas, conducting coding camps and after school clubs for the local community and professional development workshops for college students and professionals. He has a Master's of Science and Doctorate degree in Computer Science from UT Dallas. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Virasame as he takes center stage in the spotlight. Dr. Virasame, welcome. So th again, thanks for joining this presentation and uh, hopefully you get to learn a lot about uh, our center for CS Education Outreach and I'll be happy to answer all your questions towards the end. So I am the director of the Center for CS Education Outreach, and we have several websites with the information, and um, we'll, we'll probably go over them once the presentation is over as well. So this center is a part of Computer Science Department, and uh, we are the leading provider of university-based summer camp in US. There are several providers in US uh, uh, that are providing summer camps, um, coding camps specifically. ID Tech is one of them, but they are not university based. So if you look at just 100% university based, you know, uh, I believe we are the largest one, you know, so um, we are just happy to do that for uh, so many years now, so seven plus years. Uh, so that is our the biggest uh, thing we do in in this center and the next one is the after school coding clubs we go to local schools and uh, um, during the fall and spring semesters and uh, we educate a lot of kids after school and <clears throat> additionally we provide academic enrichment presentations and workshops for uh, UTD computer science students, but in reality they are open to all. I mean, other major students come, sometimes even other college students come, even public uh, uh, join as well. Professionals are uh, attend several of our events, particularly recently, now that everything is online, it has made it so much easier to attend all the events we put together. So now let's uh, dig a little bit deeper, a uh, little bit of history. Um, CS department used to offer a coding contest and a gaming contest and uh, um, kind of gaming is kind of like a project based contest and advanced to Java summer course. Dr. Iver Page uh, used to offer that course that we have been doing for a long time um, before I joined UTD back as a faculty. Um, so we believe we have been running for 15 years or 20 years. So in 2012, what we did is uh, that we we looked at that advanced Java summer course, which is an advanced one. So we, uh, we provided a basic one, and uh, then we basically pretty much worked it down from there. You know, so we expanded to middle school students. We kind of wanted to provide the pathway um, to reach there. So then we expanded all the way to elementary school kids in 2013. So. We created this center once the programs really multiplied. There are so many programs, you know, so um, we thought that's a really good to have a center for this purpose. So center was created in 2013 and with 110% uh, support from Dr. Gopal Gupta, CS department head for the past 11 years. So he is the vision. He sets the vision, he set the direction for the CS outreach. I just uh, uh, was thrilled to have his support and uh, uh, make the center where it is today. Um, we really started, interestingly, when you go back and look at those years, you know, um, there was really minimal rules. You know, UTD administration did not have 
you know, it's kind of a lot of these things are new, you know, so oversight or rules to handle minors. Um, all that was very, very limited where it's not clear many times. Um, so we had to kind of grow along with that. We started in that environment and we kind of work with the administration, you know, as things uh, um, <clears throat> formalized and uh, streamlined with the processes. Now I am really happy to say all the programs run like a well-oiled machine. You know? All these rules are important dealing with minors. And that is the reason why most universities do not run any programs, you know, because simply they don't want to deal with all the liability and all those the rules and regulation that come with the handling minors. Because when you look at the college students, they are very different. They're adults. You know, we do, there's no rules or regulation needed to handle them, really. Um, so day to day. So whereas here we are talking about minors, it's, it's extremely important. So. Um, but I'm really happy to say that we have all worked very well together in that mission and we have been running this program almost, I would say eight years, seven, eight years. So that shows the right there. It shows the success of the all these programs. Now, recently we do have a program for minors office. UTD administration created that. Carla Garner, she is the director. I work with her all the time and thanks to her office and the UTD administration for supporting our program and making it where it is today. So let's talk a little bit more about summer coding camps. So the the goal for the summer coding camps, of course it kind of changed over time, um, is to really introduce all the uh, school students to coding using age appropriate learning tools. Now, that's extremely important because you don't want to um, kind of throw them into something very complicated at very young age. So we started this program, Summer Coding camp, uh, Camps in 2013 by offering 13 coding camps for high school kids. So it's like a one or two camps every week of summer. You know, so I believe around 200 students attended at that time, and that was our experience. You know, kind of getting used to this uh, summer camps, multi providing some multiple summer camps. So that gave us the really confidence to expand further in 2014 to go 100 plus coding camps in 11 weeks of uh, the summer. We expanded to elementary kids also at that time. So this page, I guess uh, this page, uh, that's not 2014 page, that's the latest page, okay? It's the same web page we use for every year. So, but it's similar. We also started the intensive three week cybersecurity camps. There's a lot of interest in cybersecurity. And uh, so we have been running that for past four years. This year we couldn't run because of the online uh, constraint. So, so that's, that's another major piece and additional to coding camps. Several coding camps uh, we also ran in a lot of offsite locations. Um, because if you think about it, um, as we go towards the elementary, um, even with the grade pricing, somebody from South Dallas is not going to travel to UT Dallas. You know, so it's simply too far. It's not really practical for parents to bring the kids to UT Dallas for five days a week. You know, all that's extremely challenging. So what we did is we did work with uh, several elementary schools, ISDs, and uh, and even nonprofit organizations. Um, and uh, conducted several camps around the city, you know, Boys and Girls of America, you know, that, that type of uh, several nonprofit organizations. We may have, were uh, thrilled to work with them. In fact, our instructors traveled uh, as far as uh, out of Dallas, Hawaii and California and uh, Carlsbad, New Mexico. We work with New Mexico State University and we ran camps, Fort Collins, you know, they were extremely challenging, particularly when you go out of state and all that. It's uh, so many logistics to take care of. And um, so we kind of uh, think uh, very carefully now to accept more at this point. We try to charge a very uh, reasonable fee for the summer camps, like $300 per week. A full day camp and uh, half a day is 150. And for low income families, you give 50% discount on the whatever fees it is. 
so they can attend multiple weeks you know so the, every week all the fees is 50 percent discounted we also extend the 90 percent discount for the school teachers you know the summer they want to come and uh, get some professional development and uh, so just for a token fee we admit them so <clears throat> we also used to provide the residential option until last year so that out of town high school students uh, can come and uh, or even local students they want to come and stay in a college and get kind of experience the college campus for several uh, weeks i guess i didn't i guess we did offer for several years so um, again that's another big challenge it's not that easy to um, keep their minors in a residential dorm and uh, again more rules come into play so we have requested the university to kind of take over that if possible. So this year we introduced a new camp, which is a nine week AIML workshop. We kind of use the workshop camp term sometimes interchangeably. So we piloted this last year with a few students. I think Clark scholars, you know, there are incoming um, incoming uh, UTD freshmen and a few high school students. So that gave us the confidence that we can run it uh, really well. So this year we expanded to full program. It ran for two months, June, July. So it was a nine week program. What it is is really intensive deep dive into AI, ML and deep learning technologies. So to do that intensive deep dive, you do have to do the background in you know, a lot of uh, statistics and related math. I think first two, two, three weeks or so, we kind of focus on those type of things, you know, all the uh, basic uh, building blocks. Then we get into all this stuff. So it was uh, taught by our one of our uh, faculty Dr. Anurag Nagar and one PhD student assistant and one master student assistant. So two assistants and one lead faculty and uh, it was really successful. We were very thrilled about uh, how it turned out. Our 40 students uh, came in and they stayed all the way till the end and, uh, <clears throat> and total fee for the, the two month program is $1000. And again for low income families it's 500 so on. So, so we try to kind of keep the camp fees reasonable so that we can uh, cover our expenses. And uh, because uh, this is really a center is fully self-funded center, you know, so um, we are thankful for UT Dallas to provide the classrooms and that type of resources, but financially uh, we have to generate all the income. So along the way we did have few sponsors. I'll cover them a little bit later. So typical summer, this is how it looks. Typical summer, we get around 400 um, half day, one week registrations. So for elementary kids, we run a lot of half a day camps because uh, full day sitting in front of computer, even with the exciting tool, still it's a full day. That's just a long time. Full day meaning six hours, nine to 12, one to four. Um, so still we, we feel a bit uncomfortable to do that. So so we run a lot of half a day camps. So but the parents sometimes come and tell us, hey, uh, I have to go to work. It has to be full day. So then what we do is uh, elementary kids, we provide our two half a day camps back to back morning and afternoon. That way they can, uh, if parents really need it, they can sign up for the two half a day camp and make it a full day camp. So. Um, of course, the supervision is not an issue. Morning to evening, we provide supervision. Right from the time they, uh, the, the parents drop off until they pick up, we provide supervision. So, so that's around 400 we get every, uh, every summer, total number of half day, one week registration. Around 1000 full day, one week registrations we get. Uh, it kind of goes up and down a little bit more or less. It has been around that for middle school and high school students. These are full day camps. It's one week, Monday to Friday, nine to 12 and one to four. Um, out of this, uh, you can see the kind of total is around 1,400. Um, but uh, obviously the half day camps and even the full day camps that are repeats. So meaning same child comes and attends another camp. So roughly two is to one. So 
Uh, with that, we are looking at around 700 to 800 unique kids we service every summer. OK, so every summer we get to see you know, 700 students or so in our building. So every week we have around 50, 20 parallel camps going on from really elementary level all the way to very advanced level camps. And I will show kind of actual camps a little bit later. And uh, in our ECSS building, I proudly say that we have more kids than the adults in summer. You know, so around 200, there are peak weeks. I think I have seen even 350 kids sometimes, you know, so in our ECSS building. So we have really changed that building. It used to be extremely quiet before the summer camps came in. Now it used to be pin drop silence. Now it's uh, quite loud sometimes, you know, in a good way. So we employ around uh, 80 to 100 uh, computer science students as the instructors, camp instructors. And uh, it is a really great experience for computer, our students as in these instructors, because you may know a lot of computer science students tend to be a bit shy. They are more comfortable talking to the computer than uh, to humans. You know, so, so this gives them an opportunity to really um, kind of uh, put their soft skills to test. And uh, um, I have seen profound changes, the way how they interact how their confidence level and when they go for uh, interviews, it really helps them a lot. To this experience really adds to their resume as well. Typical camp is like a 10 to 20 students, campers with two instructors. However, <clears throat> that's for more middle school and high school camps. The elementary school, we have played around with various combinations. What I found was it's better to limit to like five, six students with one instructor. So for elementary kids, uh, it's uh, the camp configuration is different. So if there are 20 kids, I'll assign typically four instructors. We can, they kind of divide the big room into four, four areas. So there's one instructor working with five kids. That way they are not, nobody is waiting too long to get help when they are stuck. You know, we don't want to, them to feel that way. So elementary kids, you know, elementary, Kids, ch it's challenging to handle them, you know, because uh, university environment, everything else is built for kind of like college kids type of thing. So, and our also our college students are not uh, extremely comfortable uh, uh, dealing with very young kids. So, so they got to be trained, and they kind of get some time to get used to. So, but it has worked well though. Over time, things have um, really fallen in place, and. Uh, um, things are going very well. Uh, we do provide lunch and we provide snacks, my mid morning snack and uh, mid afternoon snack. You know, unfortunately we couldn't all do any of those uh, this summer, this summer, but uh, we are happy to run at least online. Actually they ran uh, kind of better than I expected really the online summer camps. The students really kind of adapted extremely well, you know, school students, you know, so Today, my kids started a plan ISD online school and it's a quite amazing how well they have adapted, you know, so when you're, I think that's the thing about humans, when you are put in that situation, we adapt very well. I know, but still it's very hard for elementary kids. I understand younger the child is, I think the online, it's just uh, uh, very difficult to handle because something can happen, hard to focus, all those things like first grade kindergarten. It's extremely difficult. So these are the really popular camps. We um, scratch and up. Let me talk from the kind of top to bottom. Um, parents are sometimes kindergarten children's parents or first grade second. They're also very eager to get started. And what we found is that um, it's pretty difficult in that age to learn. Um, but the code.org does make things a bit easier. You know, so today I think after the presentation, we have a separate backstage uh, session. At that time, if there's any interest, I'll be happy to demo a few things at that time. Okay, very quick demos I can provide. So code.org is a really a, um, 
they have done a marvelous job really starting with the very simple stuff how it started now where it is they have resources for the kindergarten kids all the way to almost like college students so they have built their resources so very well so um, the 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 biggest thing that code.org provides for really young kids is that uh, the step by step you know so really young kids kindergarten kids or first grade even second grade some third graders cannot handle the open tool environment you know you cannot expect them to kind of uh, just to throw something say okay try it you know they'll be lost very quickly so that's where the code.org really does a great job it's kind of like uh, um, really does the sequence of steps it's like going to bowling alley with a with the, the side stoppers, you know, so it kind of keeps you on track. You know, you don't kind of go off in some direction, you know, which is possible with all other tools. So I think they have done a wonderful job. That's what we use if you are forced to teach that young kids. You know, we try to kind of discourage many times, you know, it's too early. You know, second grade, okay. Second grade, I, I would say if I had to put some numbers, 90% um, of the first graders are probably not ready for coding. Okay, 95% of the kindergarten not ready for coding. Second grade, probably 60% of the second graders are not ready for coding. Third grade, I would say 75, 80% of the kids are ready for some coding. Okay, so from there it kind of goes up. Okay, so the first uh, kind of tool we really love and a uh, lot of school kids love is the MIT Scratch. So MIT Scratch is based on um, characters you bring on art to the screen and uh, it's kind of like a Lego building blocks in the computer, you know, except that here this blocks can do a lot more fun stuff, you know, so it's kind of like putting things together and click some buttons, something happens, you know, unless unlike a Lego building block, you just look at it and marvel. That's about it, right? So here it's a drag and drop. Everything is drag and drop this top level ones, which is very important because you don't want to deal with syntax errors at that such a young age. Again, uh, when I was a child, there is no such tool was there, you know, so so the current age children are in that sense very privileged that uh, they have all these wonderful tools. By no means these are the only tools. There are a lot of other tools. As we primarily use only free tools and even free tools. We only use a subset of that free tools. There are so many tools outside. OK, so but this is what we use to build the program. So this is a 2D animation and uh, gaming and you can do. This one is a 3D animation. Alice is a 3D animation and uh, games we can do. Um, yeah, this is really exciting uh, and another exciting tool. It's Carnegie Mellon. It was developed by uh, Carnegie Mellon and uh, it, the 3D model it has. Every object has a 3D model. It comes with a lot of lot of uh, objects and so the scratch. You can even create your own. Alice, it's a lot harder. So it comes with a library of objects. But let's say for example, human, right? Human immediately can break it down to bottom off, top, two hands, head, all that. So you can work with the individual parts. You know, so that's a lot of complexity for an elementary school kid. You know, that's why we we really recommend elementary kids to start in scratch and then come to Alice. The one thing we found is that uh, once a child does a scratch, even second grader, let's say you do a course or a camp on scratch. Interestingly, second grader is able to handle Alice when they move in here. That simple that that background they learned, the concepts they learned, they kind of enable them to really go forward and they have confidence to take on and uh, they don't uh, they don't get frustrated. I have seen several students even go up fourth grade students comfortably coding in JavaScript with the syntax. You know that looks amazing. You know fourth grade kids you know able to do programming in JavaScript uh, not uh, 
thrown off by the syntax errors simply because they have climbed through the steps. You know, of course, few of them may be genius. Yes, but most kids, they do this step by step. We found that this going from one one step to the next step really helped because all these concepts really uh, <clears throat> carry over very well. So this is the first uh, free form typing and uh, dealing with syntax errors. All that comes part of that and uh, but it's a really wonderful uh, environment. So you can code in one side. The other side is uh, showing the output. In fact, we have a course in UT Dallas for YETEC students using this uh, environment. So um, that's our programming fundamentals for non majors course. Then after uh, the campus master JavaScript, then they are ready to act like a professional, you know, C++, Java, Python and all the other serious stuff they can learn. And after that, they can go to uh, advanced to one object oriented and uh, maybe game development and programming contests, which is a different type of thing. All that Android app programming, all those things we offer as well. We call it level four. OK. We have spent quite a bit of time in that. So, so why do we do this particular coding camps, particularly for elementary kids? You know, because colleges, it makes uh, sense to do something for high school kids, right? After all, high school kids are going to become college students very soon. So, it really makes sense to take care of high school kids. Um, but why do for uh, all the way to elementary, right? What we see is uh, that we see that uh, just like uh, <clears throat> Facebook founder says, uh, Mark says, uh, we see that the coding skills becoming basic, just like reading, writing, math, you know, so kind of coding will be the another basic uh, skill that students need to learn. Um, I go one step beyond that, and also when you don't introduce coding at the young age, particularly when you go to the very underprivileged communities. I have gone to high school career day and uh, to give some talk or something. At that time when I talk about software development and coding, many students uh, kind of look at me like uh, I'm talking something from you know, something so strange, you know, so out of this world, you know. So th that's simply because they were never uh, introduced. Many schools did not provide uh, uh, the computer science courses and uh, they never have dealt with computer science. So, so that's uh, very sad if you look at it, you know, because uh, we are all believe in informed decision making that the school kids are uh, making their college major decisions and career decisions without knowing your yeah, one big area, right? So um, so we are not claiming that everybody who is attending these camps will become like software engineers. No, we don't we don't claim that. That's not our intention, but certainly it will help them a lot, really. So even in school, right? Even in school, once they learn coding, I believe that it will have uh, they will they'll be able to comfortably deal with the data, whether it's Excel or it's using some program. Science Fair is one of the good places, right? More and more data driven, a lot more data is coming to us and children are no exception. So they will be collecting a lot of data too. So to do that processing, you know, this uh, coding really um, coding skills really will help them. It really boosts their self confidence. So. Um, so we really believe that more and more uh, the jobs are touching the data. So basic coding skills will really help them. OK, so another big piece is the after school coding clubs. So since most elementary schools end anywhere between 2.30 to 3 p.m., um, so the after school programs are extremely popular because parents don't want to leave work at the middle of the afternoon and they pick up. So they try to many parents try to put in as many after school as possible, you know. Um, so <clears throat> our coding camps are popular too. Um, so the we work with the school teachers and PTAs uh, principal. So they them individually and they they reach out to us whenever the, if they want to do a coding club. We typically do it in the, the computer lab. And um, 
So most popular one is MIT Scratch for third grade to fifth grade students. Sometimes we have offer advanced ones too. They kind of run out if they want to repeat or whatever. So we may provide Scratch and also Alice, you know, like that. Along the way, we have uh, gotten sponsorship from uh, State Farm and Mark Cuban Foundation and a few others. So whenever there's a lot of sponsorship, we have good, uh, decent amount of money, then we try to provide as many free clubs as possible. Simply because many low income schools, the kids, you know, if you ask them for $10, they will not attend after school club, you know, so. So we have uh, really we are honored, we are privileged and we are humbled to provide that experience you know, for a lot of local schools to uh, this coding clubs for free or with a very low fee. And, um, and the, what we found is unlike the summer, fall and spring, most majority of the attendees are will not get any other opportunity to learn to code. So, so we were in that uh, extremely important role that through our program, we managed to touch so many children, low income families, children, that we introduced them to coding. So uh, we started one club in spring 2013. That's because my daughter went to one school. So I asked the principal without knowing what I'm getting into that I, I would like to do a after school coding club in a Harmony School of Innovation. Um, I guess it used to be called as Harmony School of Business, you know, right here near UT Dallas. So, Kite and George Bush. You know, from there, now uh, we are running typically 70 clubs in uh, 50 schools, and uh, that's a, that should be uh, spring 2020. So, so it has been uh, like that for every fall and spring. Um, so along the way, sponsorship helped as well, as I mentioned earlier. So this website has more information and uh, I may be able to go through the website later too. So the challenges uh, after school are quite challenging simply because we have to go to the schools. So we have to travel to the schools and we are teaching only one hour. And sometimes some schools we travel one to one and a half hours to reach the school just to teach that one hour and come back. Lot of title one schools, low income schools are quite far away. You know, Garland, Mesquite, you know, Dallas and uh, Cedar Hill, you know, all the South Dallas communities. So, which is very challenging. So that's uh, still we continue to face that challenge. I, I try to work around with that challenge. Some coding clubs, we try to move to Saturdays. Cedar Hill with some schools, we ran Saturday coding clubs, you know. So kids are very fresh. Instead of one hour, we run for two hours or three hours. You know, all that we have done, you know. So, and another uh, smaller challenge is the supervision of the school kids. You know, school kids are in their schools, but uh, who is in charge of them? You know, so our instructors, we are not very familiar with the schools. So it's kind of become challenging. So what we request is we request the schools to provide a resource to take care of them. So that way we can focus on teaching. We also do private tutoring. Um, so this is uh, for the students who do the pro, uh, either clubs or summer camps. And after that, they want to do something on their own. They want to progress on their own. They have a busy schedule. Um, those are all great reasons to do private tutoring, you know, so, and, and uh, uh, or even they have some class project, you know, so or maybe they want APCS review. One of the good thing is uh, uh, they are particularly high schools. More and more schools are offering CS courses. That's a great thing. AP Computer Science Principles, AP Computer Science. So we provide AP Computer Science uh, some additional uh, tutoring too. So this summer was specifically very, very popular. This private tutoring was simply because uh, we since we offered all online camps, you know, a lot of kids didn't want to sit six hours in a computer in summer, you know, so I cannot blame them. So we did a lot of private tutoring this summer. So, and uh, the, pre the private tutoring actually went to all over the place. We went to whole country we covered actually. We had a private tutoring, few people from uh, New York, few from California, and same too, summer camp also, we had several out of state uh, uh, parents, you know, um, they joined. So 
of course, California people have to put up with 7 a.m. So, um, <clears throat> camp start time, our 9 a.m. So, as I said before, Rockwell Collins and State Farm. State Farm continues to support us every year. You know, we are very thankful for their support, particularly to offer uh, um, girls only camps and uh, some low income schools, low income area of schools, after school clubs. And uh, Rockwell Collins also have been supporting for several years. Mark Cuban Foundation um, um, has supported for a one or two uh, spring semesters, and we ran around 50 clubs based on the sponsorship from Mark Cuban. And uh, Home Light is a real estate company. Recently, they have uh, come forward to support us. So, of course, we'd love more support uh, to, so that we can really support the more Title I schools and low-income families and, um, and simply provide more free events. You know? so, we can cover the cost of these free events. That's uh, be wonderful. So the CS Outreach Center is not just for school students. I know I talked a lot about schools, uh, school students, and all these programs. It actually, even though we say outreach, we also do inreach to our own college students. And in the process, we do open it up to other college students and the professionals, or even advanced level high school students. So one of the tradition we have is that every time the semester starts, our semester starts next Monday, is we provide lunchtime tech talks. So for one month or so, professional comes every day, every weekday to give you a tech talk. And after the talk, we give free lunch. You know, so this uh, this fall, a lot of things are online. So this, the talks are online too. So unfortunately, no food, but at least the tech talks still go on. People can attend from their homes. Professionals really love it because they don't need to travel to attend and they don't need to deal with our parking issues, you know, all the growth problems. So, so the lunchtime tech talks will continue, start next Monday and uh, this website meetup.com's utdcsor has the all the events and uh, additionally we arrange a lot of uh, other tech talks too it need not be just that one month one one month and uh, only lunch time no such thing we arrange a lot of tech talks later in the day and uh, weekends weekend workshops are very popular so that there's no contention between with the classes and uh, many times industry professionals come in to teach, faculty teach, and even experienced our own students come, come forward to teach. And uh, all these details are captured in these websites, our uh, meetup, UTDCSOR meetup and Facebook site for the department. And uh, these events are not related to the our ACM student organization events. They also, in addition to outreach events, student organizations run their own events. Okay, so particularly with a large number of students like uh, UT Dallas, you know, you can never have too many events. You know, in computer science, we have 4,500 plus students. So you can have five events every day. You know, still there should be enough people should be able to take advantage of those. Sometimes we even have two, three parallel events that go on. So <clears throat> why do we do this? We really want to help our students to kind of uh, become familiar with the industry oriented skills, latest technologies, latest software packages. So because our courses tend to focus a lot more on concepts and really making sure they have the skills to apply but then this this workshops really focus on application in many times and also sometimes the students are not able to do all the courses you know within that time and so any course that they couldn't do so they they may instead attend uh, attend a workshop to cover some content at least so now that we have moved everything, everything has moved uh, online around us. So we have moved all these things online too. Even today morning, we had a, a four day workshop as part of the series. We had a machine learning workshop today morning. And in person, when this happens in person, of course, it's a great networking opportunity for our students as well, for the, with the professionals. So recently, um, we have been uh, running uh, um, 
running lot of conferences, Saturday conferences. Last two years, I believe we ran every year five to five to seven, eight conferences every year for the past two years. Um, so pretty much it's a whole day event and several talks and uh, and a workshop. So typically, so some very advanced topic when they have a lot of speakers, then it may be whole day of speakers. The spring break, that's when all the shutdown happened, right? Around the country. So when uh, UTD extended spring break for one more week, so we did the spring break online conference. And uh, <clears throat> so we try to do as many online events as possible so that our students can uh, benefit and uh, stay focused and uh, instead of worrying about the virus, you know, which um, other than being safe, we cannot do much about many of us. So instead we focus on something uh, that's uh, valuable to them. Um, so we provided several workshops along the way, AWS, Azure, AI, ML, deep learning, all these uh, hot topics. Looking forward, I'm hoping that uh, in late September we can do a testing contest. We are working on that and uh, um, processing Foundation runs a co creative coding festival um, several times uh, uh, at various places and all that. So I'm hoping we can run a virtual creative coding festival series of talks and workshops, very uh, very graphics oriented, um, that type of thing. So very appealing to school kids, very appealing to kind of visual learners and. Uh, uh, game design folks and our A tech students and all that. So, so if any of you, you know, you have, your company would like to sponsor, you know, I expect it to be kind of each one few thousand dollars. That's what I'm expecting the cost to be. So that's what they asked me, you know, how much I can raise to run this workshop, uh, this coding festival. I hope we can do it. So that's our final slide, you know. So at this time, I'll be really happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Dr. Virasame. Who can students contact to be a leader in the after school coding workshops for this fall? Um, who can the students contact? Are they this is from the schools? Are they is it UTD students? Either way, it's me. <laughs> you can uh, this email is a good email to contact CSK12. Um, so we'll take care of that. Yes. The next question is how many open positions are present in CS Outreach Club for wow. new fall 2020 MS students? Wow, and also, uh -huh. are there any graduate level sessions as well in CS Outreach? OK, so this is probably our current students asking this question. Um, <clears throat> so this fall is, uh, as you know, it's very, very different from remaining uh, years you know so other years rather um, so because we don't know wh what the plans are so right now we are going to do the uh, pretty much online some saturday clubs and now the schools are running online at this point i'm not very clear how many clubs will be running you know so it probably we will know in two three weeks once the kind of schools kind of settle down and uh, however, I believe a lot of uh, private tutoring will continue to occur this uh, this fall, you know, because the people are doing more from home. So I think more will happen from home. And uh, so later, uh, again, you can email in this website, uh, in this uh, email address, csk12 at etdallas.edu. I can provide the additional information. We hope to hire some more, but again, it's not extremely clear what our needs are. So I'm hoping two, three weeks, it will kind of uh, we'll get a better look. At that time, we'll continue to kind of hire as needed. That's one of the thing about CS outreach. I don't have a very clear idea when started when starting every semester but as uh, based on the trend we try to do based on the past trend but uh, for this fall there is no trend so so it's very confusing but uh, hopefully two three weeks it will be a lot more clear 
Um, so I don't know the other question. Uh, I do. I am not sure this is the question, but I will answer uh, in one way. Maybe it's uh, useful. We do have that Saturday clubs. We have moved. I think I forgot to mention after school coding clubs this uh, this fall. We are providing free after school clubs, but instead of doing after school, uh, we are doing it on Saturdays. The reason is that uh, during the weekdays, the new format kids are already on the computer too long, right? From home, they're already today. I saw my kids were morning to till now they were in the computer with Zoom session and uh, Google Meet one after the other. So, so I don't want uh, one more hour of uh, screen time. So we have moved everything to the online. Uh, online and on Saturdays, this website fb.com utd csor events slash events shows all the Saturday events. So we have from scratch the elementary kids, scratch and micro bits, Alice, JavaScript, Java, Python. So all this we have on Saturdays and um, kind of starts in the morning, goes till the evening, various one hour slots. So the college students. Who are new to particular language, they are welcome to join and uh, learn too for a particular Java, Python, or other session. You just want to join and see what's going on, they're welcome to do so. Thank you. Um, we do have two additional questions in the queue. Okay. One is Could you talk more about the animation parts of the courses? Some more. Is it more videos and the campers are being tested over it, or is the animation um, interactive? What is that actually like? Okay, okay. Good question. <clears throat> in fact, animation and gaming together. So um, in the in the tools I had mentioned, pretty much uh, the, these. These ones are pretty much animation. In fact, even this is animation too. So animation goes through all these tools. So this is uh, really Scratch and uh, Alice, even to extend JavaScript, really simple animation. It's not uh, extremely fancy, complicated animation. For example, game, right? Game, game is kind of animation too, except that we have a user input also, right? So, for example, cars coming and crashing and things, you know, flying out. That's a very complicated animation, you know. So these tools uh, won't do all that. So this is really absolute basics of animation, but it is still animation because a lot of kids really love to see something visual. So the key is we are using animation as the kind of like a dragging or a exciting the students to come in, but in reality they are learning coding. OK, and uh, so we're not using any commercial animation software or anything like that here. So these are all the tools really focused on coding with the kind of graphical front end. So you can, for example, JavaScript, you can write uh, two, three lines of code in the Khan Academy JavaScript, by the way. It's not a regular web JavaScript. It's kind of a Khan Academy JavaScript, which uses a processing library in that you can write two, three lines and you can make a, a ball kind of uh, do small animation. You know, it's, it's amazing that you can write so few lines and do see some animation. You can make it a bit more complicated. For example, you can have an array of balls bouncing around, you know, so that's uh, complicated. Even they are hitting each other and uh, turning, that's more physics and everything comes into play, right? You can, that's also next level. You can still do that. So, so those are all kind of in the middle here, JavaScript and beyond. But we won't do anything commercial animation type of, that's beyond the scope of uh, all these camps. We won't do like, um, um, I don't even know, Maya or a few other type of thing. We Now and then we do offer that as a camp sometimes, you know, the game maker, for example. Um, so the we try to provide the camp that is where there is some coding involved. You know, there are a lot of tools out there uh, which focus a lot on animation, a lot on gaming, but there's not much coding in it. So then we feel that that's not the things that we are interested in. So because we want to make sure that uh, we are teaching coding. So, um, OK, I hope that helps. 
Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Um, I have one final question in the queue. If you are a freshman going into the semester, what would you recommend to do or attend in terms of clubs? Hmm, freshman, yeah, it depends on whether it's a CS freshman or some other uh, major freshman. Um, there's CS freshman, I would say depends on you really what you have done in school. If you have done uh, Java in school, sure attend the Python uh, club, that Saturday club, you know, that will be useful. And um, uh, if you are really non CS major, you can attend anything. If you're new to coding, JavaScript club is a good one to attend on Saturdays. And uh, I'm going to go back to this page. That way you, you, you have the you have the uh, websites. So the yeah, so this website is the probably the most important website for all the college students. Meetup.com slash UTD CSOR slash events, you know. I mean, if you go to that page, you can click on events. OK, so it has the all the events. Yeah, it's kind of catch all one place. You will see extremely simple stuff. When I when when there is some really basic type of events, I try to put a kids in the front. That doesn't mean it's only kids only, but it is just to help the parents that uh, those are really simpler ones. A fifth grader can attend, for example. Most of the events there tend to be for college students, but uh, the, the complexity will vary. You know, you should look at it and uh, decide which one to attend. Similarly, let's say you just manage to get into some really complex talk. Of course, you can leave any time. It's online now. You don't need to feel bad, you know, all that. So, but I do encourage you to try to attend as many as possible. Many events are uh, uh, even run by the students, you know, so there is a event next week, uh, week after next about uh, several students coming back from internship. They are going to have a panel session, you know, UTD CS students. So, so those are uh, great sessions to attend. And uh, please interact when you're attending, please interact. That's how the value is, you know, if you don't interact, you can be watching YouTube videos. You don't need to attend, you know, so please in, uh, interact with the, all the event presenters, interact with your teachers in uh, faculty, in your classes, certainly. That's where the real value of the classes is, is the interaction, okay? Good luck. Thank you, Dr. Vriya Same, for sharing your time, talent, and resources with the attendees and community at large. For additional information and a list of Office of Research events, please visit research.utdallas.edu. Thank you.